This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host Brian and today I'm going to take you down another nerd wormhole because as you guys are starting to understand on this channel, I'm a nerd. And so when it comes to something like the topic of the new equipment shortage we're experiencing, I find a way to make it nerdy. So today we're going to talk about that in nerd terms. So if you aren't familiar, if you swing into almost any equipment dealership, you will notice a severe lack of inventory sitting on the lot. Likewise, if you swing into most of your auto dealerships, you're going to notice a severe lack of inventory, if not crickets chirping in the background. It's that bad. Now, there's been a multitude of reasons for those problems, uh, the biggest one being the onset of COVID, the fact that manufacturing plants had to shut down for extended durations. Anytime there was a COVID outbreak, they would have to shut down at least part of the plant, if not the entire plant. There have just been a multitude of things over this last year, including the trade war. Like, let's not forget about that because it has been a really crazy couple of years here. We had the trade war that also played into it. So there's been a lot of factors that have played into this lack of inventory that manufacturers are experiencing. And I do want to put this out here. What we're about to talk about, the microchip shortage, is not the only reason that manufacturers are short on inventory. And for some manufacturers, it's not even the biggest reason they are short on inventory. But nonetheless, it's really interesting. It's a nerdy subject. And so I'm here to talk about it because I think it's fascinating. So let's talk about the microchip shortage. If you aren't familiar and you've had your head buried in the sand, we are globally experiencing a microchip shortage. What are microchips? They're like tiny little processors that take in information and then they output a result. And that sounds really super simplistic, but these things are in everything. They're in your computer, they're in your phone, they're in your car, they're in your bulldozer, they're in the camera I'm recording on right now. There's a little chip in your credit card that talks to the receiver that you put your credit card into. Microchips are everywhere. In every electronic device you use, there are microchips. And likewise, that brand new shiny bulldozer you want so bad, has a lot of microchips in it. So when we're suffering from a global shortage of microchips, guess what? Your bulldozer can't run. So why are we in this microchip shortage? This is actually the fascinating aspect of this whole thing to me. And it's because I didn't really realize that this whole issue existed. So we have to understand a few things. The first thing we need to understand is that it takes anywhere from three to six and a half months from the time you submit your order and your order starts being processed before you actually see a microchip that you ordered. Now, that's the time from when they start making the microchip. Microchip manufacturers are already right in the middle of giant batches of microchips that they're making. So just because I give them an order tomorrow doesn't mean my order is going to start being manufactured tomorrow. So that's a really important concept we need to understand is the lead time on these chips. Another important concept we need to understand, and this is probably the most interesting to me, is globally, there are only about six microchip manufacturers that supply the world with microchips. Now, there are a handful of other companies that are significantly smaller that produce microchips on a much, much smaller level. But when we're talking global production for auto manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, computer manufacturers, any of the large scale microchip industries, there's only about six manufacturers in the world that control that output. That's just, that's amazing to me that we've, we've somehow managed to live with this delicate balance and we've never seen a disruption in microchips until now. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF 
stuff and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs? It comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system. Now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. So let's kind of figure out how this all came together to create the perfect storm that we are experiencing now with the microchip shortage. So let's go back to COVID. When COVID first came into play, what happened was all of the manufacturers, because of the long lead times for microchips, they all sat down and they started to forecast what their demands for microchips would be. Most automotive manufacturers, as well as the equipment world, which is what we're talking about, they all said, well, everyone's gonna be sitting at home for the better part of a year. There's probably not gonna be that many new equipment orders. And so they dialed back their demands for microchips. Then everyone sat at home for that year, like we all experienced, and we all got bored. And so what did we do? We got on Amazon and we ordered computers for our home office. We ordered a new gaming system because we were bored out of our mind. We ordered all of these special things that we wanted to play with that needed microchips. So on the microchip side of things, all of the sudden consumer electronics, there was a huge surge in microchip needs. And so all of the attention and focus of the microchip manufacturers, mind you, there's only six of them, roughly, they all directed their attention at the consumer electronic goods. And so they started manufacturing all of those microchips for all of the things that you and I ordered during quarantine. Now, quarantine was a little shorter than everyone was forecasting, and more importantly, demand for new equipment and new cars ramped up far quicker than everyone was anticipating. So now everyone goes into a panic. Now we need a lot of microchips. Well, remember that long lead time we talked about? You have to wait six months before you get a microchip from the time it starts being manufactured. So that means we have to wait for all of these consumer goods microchips to get manufactured and then they get to our order and then you still have to wait that three to six and a half months. So you can see how we already have an issue on our hands because we can't get those microchips just right now when we need it to satisfy the demand of customers who want a brand new bulldozer. So that's one of the biggest factors that has played into the microchip shortage. Now there's been other factors. One of these manufacturers exists in Taiwan and they happen to be responsible for about 60 to 70% of the industry's microchips. Like, so we already have this small group of microchip manufacturers, but now one of those manufacturers is responsible for the vast majority of microchips that are being processed. They also happen to exist in Taiwan, which just so happens to be experiencing a severe drought this year. How does that play into this whole thing? Well, it turns out microchips need a lot of water to be manufactured because they're continuously rinsed through their whole manufacturing process. So now we have this huge manufacturer of microchips that is having a hard time manufacturing those microchips because they don't have enough water due to this drought. To make matters even worse, now we have another one of the manufacturers that suffered a fire in their factory. And while it didn't destroy the entire factory, it produced enough smoke and damage to the rest of the factory. They had to shut down for months to actually clean this. It's actually pretty interesting there as well. These microchip manufacturing facilities are super, super sterile clean rooms, way cleaner than a hospital operating room. That's how clean these environments have to be so that there aren't issues with the chips that are coming out. So even though the fire didn't impact the entire plant, the smoke was able to travel around. It was months before the plant got back online. And as far as I know, they're still not back to pre-fire manufacturing levels. So we have yet another factor that's playing into this global shortage. Now, there's another interesting dynamic at play. Let's go back to the onset of COVID. And I'm gonna remind you of a laughable piece of history. You remember the toilet paper shortage? I do, it was a pain. 
the same sort of human psychology that happened with the toilet paper shortage is happening now with microchips. So let's go back and talk about the toilet paper shortage. There wasn't a problem with toilet paper, remember? Everyone was happy, everyone was able to wipe just fine, and then someone decided that because COVID was here, we were going to run out of toilet paper. And so we had a small, a small portion of our population go out and start hoarding toilet paper. And so even though there wasn't a toilet paper shortage, they created a toilet paper shortage. And so now everyone, even the sane, rational human beings of this world, had to go out and buy copious amounts of toilet paper because there was a run on toilet paper. The same sort of dynamic exists in this situation. We now have all of these manufacturers that have a huge demand for microchips. And they know that once their spot in the queue comes up, they have to get as many microchips as they need. But they go, no, no, no. I need to order some extras because we don't get another run for a long time. So we're going to order extra microchips. Well, it's fine if one or two manufacturers of consumer goods do that. But now everyone is doing that. Everyone is padding their numbers. And so what's happening is we're creating artificial scarcity. In other words, there's not enough microchips because we're worried that there's not going to be enough microchips. And so we're creating the problem that we are seeing right now due to human psychology. That's really fascinating to me that here we are a year out from the onset of COVID, everything's starting to simmer down. Yes, we've had some other variants, but I think we can all collectively agree that for the most part, we're on the backside of COVID. And yet we still have these same characteristics and these same issues happening that we saw at the beginning of COVID. And that is playing into something as simple as that's why you can't buy your shiny new bulldozer you want. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I find that totally fascinating. So just to dial back, I know that this is not the only thing that plays into you not being able to buy your new bulldozer. I also know that for some manufacturers, this isn't even a huge factor when it comes to not being able to buy your new bulldozer. You know, the other issues associated with COVID probably played a bigger factor. But to me, because this has had such an impact on not only our equipment, but also vehicles, also refrigerators, also any sort of electronics you're trying to buy right now, really it all boils down to just these six manufacturers and these weird dynamics at play. So that's all I've got for today. Like I said, we dove down the nerd wormhole. I appreciate it if you stuck with me. I thought this was super fascinating. I hope it's been informational for you guys. Thanks for following along, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.